Hey everyone, it's Mark here, and today we're not working on the Mechatech FW01. Something exciting though, I'm taking you guys on tour. That's right, we're leaving the workshop for the kitchen, <laughs> but don't worry, we're not making a cooking video. We'll still be working on the fifth scale. And the intro. Who can guess what I was making in today's intro? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, but I'll give you a hint, you'll want to stick around to the end because it's going to be awesome. But the neighbours might hate it. <laughs> so why are we in the kitchen today? Well, I'm going to show you the importance of warming your engine before use. Let's take a close look at why. Let's look at the temperatures. Cylinders at 20, pistons at 20. Oh, look at that, such a precise fit. So precise that if not warm properly, the piston can prematurely wear. It would be rubbing against that cylinder if not warmed properly. And we'll go through that in a minute. So, a piston weighs roughly 23 grams. The cylinder roughly weighs 250 grams. Can you see how the piston is gonna heat up much, much quicker than the cylinder? What happens when aluminium heats up? Well, it expands. If the piston's expanding much, much quicker than the cylinder, if we're revving that engine, we're prematurely wearing that piston. Little bits of piston, little bits of that aluminium are going to be wearing off the piston onto the cylinder wall. We're also gonna wear that ring prematurely as well. Just to demonstrate this, I'm gonna heat the piston to 100 degrees and drop it into a room temperature cylinder. Now, 100 degrees is the rough operating temperature of a 23C CNR engine. Let's take a look. So the cylinder is at 20 degrees. I'll just grab the piston out of the oven. We'll just check its temperature. Looks like it's just over 100 degrees. Let's check the fitment now. Wow, look at that, it doesn't fit anymore. That's amazing. It just goes to show that the cylinder needs a good heat soak before we start revving the engine. If we rev the engine, we're overheating the piston. The cylinder and piston need to come to temperature together. It's really, really important. So I have here a great example of what happens when you don't heat an engine correctly. You can see this one suffered a cold seizure, pinching that ring. The piston was revved way too hard heating up and heated up much quicker than the cylinder. It didn't stand a chance. So this time I've heated the cylinder to just on 60 degrees to simulate a good heat soak. The piston still at just under 100. Let's check the fitment. Wow, look at that, that's amazing. Look at what the heat soak has done. I can't believe that difference. All right, just to give you an idea on how long it takes to heat soak an engine to 60 degrees, I'm gonna put one of my old motors into a test stand I've just built. That's right, I was building a test stand in the intro just for this video. Um, anyway, let's get out of the kitchen before my fiance comes home and catches me with car parts in the oven because uh, she won't be happy. All right, let's go annoy some neighbors in bed.
Right, here it is. This is the data straight out of the 7px telemetry system. I imported this stuff into Excel and then just did a quick graph for you guys. So you can see here um, the first red line is at start at ambient temperature, so just under 18 degrees. And then after about a minute and a half, we reach just over 40 degrees Celsius here. So you can see here at this point, we get a good heat soak and then the, the temperature levels out until I begin to rev the engine harder. So here, I was only revving to around 40%. So that's 40% throttle for a minute and a half in pulses to get us to that heat soak point where both the piston and cylinder at a really good temperature start running. All right, here it is for you, for those that are wondering, it's the test bed. So this is just something I made up. You can see there, I made up a bit of a side mount and, and welded it to this um, RHS here. Bit of a slot in the other side so we can get to the engine mounts under here. Bit of a, uh, it's a broken carbon stay I've got just for a bit of a support on the exhaust. The fuel tank's bolted directly to it. One thing I did do is I've made up here just a 180 gram counterweight just so the engine wasn't running unloaded. That's just something I turned up on the lathe here in the workshop. It'll really help for some future videos uh, that are coming up, that one. We just got the uh, temperature sensor here on the 7px and just an old servo I had laying around just to operate the throttle there. Really worthwhile um, set up. I think in the future I'll be running all my engines in on this rather than clogging up a, a nice titanium pipe. I'll, I'll be oiling up this, this dirty thing and, and just uh, running the engines in here at home. Well, that's it guys, video done. I really had fun making this video. Hopefully you got something out of it that'll extend the life of your pistons too. If you got any questions, just leave them down below. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Um, if you're not signed up to YouTube, it's a really easy process to sign up. If you've got a Gmail account, you're 90% of the way there. We've got some really cool videos coming up and as a subscriber, you'll be alerted to those videos coming up. Um, we're gonna be utilizing this test bed and we're gonna be doing some uh, max RPM runs on engines and bits and pieces, um, some tuning videos, some videos on zero drag seals, a whole range of things. So be sure to subscribe to you see those videos coming out. Thanks guys, I'll see you later.